Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in anti-ion wave propagation. Today we'll talk about input impedance of a transmission line uh, at a certain distance d from the load. Uh, the prerequisites for this video is of course the uh, thorough knowledge of uh, what a transmission line is and what are the parameters of a transmission line. Uh, including the distributed parameters of the transmission line. Uh, I'll give a link uh, in the description of all the related videos of transmission lines. Uh, if uh, you're most welcome to see those vi videos before you can proceed on to see this one. So I'll be talking about the input impedance of a transmission line for both a lossy line and a lossless line. Now please understand if uh, we look at the transmission line, this is something a transmission line would look like and it will have its um, characteristic impedance which is uh, given by Z0. So the impedance offered by this transmission line is known as the characteristic impedance and it's given by Z0 and it, it is calculated um, using the distributed parameters of the transmission line. So you should be aware of this parameter first and then you can see that every transmission line is eventually ending up at certain load because the primary objective of a transmission line is to carry some signal that will flow on the transmission line and it will deliver that signal to some load. So we have ZL as the load impedance. Now if we consider these two parameters and a transmission line but uh, you'll see that the transmission line uh, will have certain amount of impedance uh, which is known as input impedance if we cut or if we break this transmission line at a certain distance d. For example if um, from the load my, I take up a distance d so at a distance d if I look into the transmission line uh, I'll find uh, I'll, I'll find the input impedance of that transmission line at this point uh, which is at a distance d because characteristic impedance would not characterize uh, for uh, that scenario because because we've ended or we've marked that transmission line at a distance d and from a distance d uh, from the load we wish to calculate the input impedance uh, because we would wish to uh, connect our signal at a distance d so that makes sense that uh, Zn is something which needs to be calculated mm. and this distance d will play an important part because at every point on this transmission line the input impedance will change. So if we, if we wish to calculate our input impedance at a point d which is greater than the small d let us say this is capital D, it will be different from the one which is calculated here and so on and so forth because this will depend upon the standing wave ratio and of course the distance because the distance will uh, cause certain amount, amount of phase shift in the signal. Now that being said, we also know that uh, apart from Z0 there is one parameter known as gamma which is known as propagation constant. So what is propagation constant? Propagation constant is uh, alpha plus J beta. It consists of two parameters. Uh, the attenuation constant and the phase constant and you can calculate it from the distributed parameters R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C. Now having calculated gamma which is the propagation constant, uh, you can easily calculate this Vd which is the voltage at a distance d from the load and Id which will be the current uh, 
flowing into the transmission line so technically this will be the input current and this will be the input voltage and uh, Zn will technically become uh, Vd of course at a distance d upon i d so uh, if we know the value of vd and id we can easily calculate zn and that is what the objective of this tutorial is so vd the voltage at certain distance d is given by uh, v the voltage the actual voltage which is applied and it is governed by some factors which is e raised to power gamma d so propagation constant and d plus um, this this factor is the standing wave ratio so you can see that this voltage at a certain distance d is uh, the input voltage into uh, some parameter which is governed by the uh, propagation constant and the standing wave ratio and of course id is given by this v upon z naught and z naught i mentioned earlier that this is the internal impedance of the transmission lines and z in becomes vd upon id and of course uh, v upon z naught into this factor has a negative sign here you need to note it down very very carefully and the next things are uh, uh, some mathematical operations being performed here and if you calculate this upon this and perform some trigonometry identities you'll end up getting the value of z in the input impedance of a transmission line at a distance d from the load to be equivalent to z naught and in the numerator you have z l plus z naught tan hyperbolic tan d and z naught plus z l hyperbolic tan gamma d now so technically you can say that the input impedance of the transmission line depends upon the characteristic impedance number one the first uh, point is it depends upon characteristic impedance uh, number two it depends upon the load impedance also right so ZL features twice here and then it depends upon pro propagation constant gamma and gamma in turn depends upon the distributed components of the transmission line R, L, G and C and finally it depends upon the distance so you can see that if you vary the distance this ZN will vary if you vary gamma this ZN will vary so and so forth so once you know this um, formula which is the input impedance of the transmission line at a certain distance d and its dependence on gamma which is alpha plus j beta so this becomes the case of a lossy line which has certain amount of attenuation involved in it what if we remove this attenuation what if there is no attenuation in the transmission line that becomes a case of the lossless line so if we uh, gamma is equivalent to j beta only and we do away with this part we get a case where this zn will become the input impedance of a lossless line so this is what we get here input impedance of a lossless line for a lossless line we know that alpha is zero so hyperbolic tan um, gamma d will become hyperbolic tan alpha plus j beta d and alpha goes here for lossless condition and we get j tan beta d so this j tan beta d is substituted in this formula rest everything is the same if you look at the previous formula we had hyperbolic tan uh, gamma d i'm sorry and over here we have j uh, tan beta d <coughs> So rest everything is the same so you could take a note of these two formulas for solving numericals on um, calculating the input impedance of a lossless or a loss lossy line let's take up one numerical here so 
in numerical will look something like this a coaxial cable has z naught 75 ohms and it's terminated with the load of an impedance z l so what's given here is the load impedance of a transmission line is uh, 60 plus j 30 ohms and its characteristic impedance which is distributed throughout the transmission line is given to be 75 ohms and um, the operation of frequency the signal which is propagating is 1 gigahertz and you need to calculate uh, the input impedance at a distance uh, of 50 centimeter from the load so from this distance we need to see how much Im impedance uh, is being offered by the transmission line if we connect our source here or if we wish to you know start our process from here so in order to do that the formula is just the same so calculation of input impedance All right in order to solve this question what we need to do here is we need to first calculate um, our beta and beta is going to be omega upon c so it will be 2 pi into f upon 3 into 10 raised to power 8 so it gives me uh, by the way my frequency is 1 gigahertz so I can substitute 2 pi 10 raised to power 9 upon 3 into 10 raised to power 8 I get a value of 20 point nine four radian per meter now why is beta important uh, to be calculated because we'll need beta d in the tan uh, part of z n so calculating beta d i get uh, 20.94 into the distances 0.5 meters and so beta d is 600 degrees and then uh, you need to put tan beta d so putting this in the same formula over here so her rest is uh, just the mathematical calculation of uh, complex numbers and in order to perform calculations on the complex numbers I highly recommend that you watch the video where I explain how to do polar to rectangular or rectangular to polar conversions in a calculator 991ES so I'll put a link in the description and uh, a card towards the end of the tutorial and this becomes 119.15 minus j 16.89 ohms so zl is this z naught is 75 and tan beta d is tan of 600 degrees and you'll get your answer here well that's about it for today i hope you liked the video if you did give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel in the next video i'll take up an example of a lossy line with distributed parameters so stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one take care bye bye